Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Popo, and in this video I will show you a bunch of techniques to create this tactical terminal FDI animation in After Effects, and I believe we're gonna end up with something very special. It is important to mention that I have spent a day creating a cell frame to know how this animation would look like in the end, as well as a direction for this entire project. I will attach a link to the time lapse in the description, so make sure you check it out. Alright, firstly, we will have to create a text in a new composition that will help guide the camera from scene 1 to scene 2 to the final scene. And for that, I created a new composition and I put my text in there. I proceeded with bringing in most of the Kitbash HUD FUI I created prior to this tutorial, and place in 3D space to have a feeling of depth and complexity. Then I recklessly went and eyeballed the camera of movement from one scene to another using this text composition. But I highly re don't recommend this workflow for beginners as it may result in hours of frustration if you are not familiar enough with all the issues you may encounter. Instead, I advise you to do the three rules I created for a better camera movement. First, we create an all for each scene. Then, we create a text that shows the numbers of the scene. Finally, we create a camera and we make it move towards each null scene by using the parent and zero out the position values. When you do this rule of three, all is left is to refine the movement to your liking and some nice rotations to the camera for better angle suite of your scenes. Now that we have our camera movements, I started working on the design and layout of the text in the scene. I then pre comp each scene to make sure I don't have a chaotic project. To make sure I have a nicely visible workflow, I went and colored the kit patches and layers to the blue and orange color I chose. It is really important to have a near perfect distribution of layers in the Z position while moving the camera from one scene to another. This will add more beauty to how the camera moves in the scene like being inside a terminal or a computer server. While working on this project, Toros Kose released his monthly cheap retile kit bash, and I couldn't stop myself from trying it out and getting used to it. So, I used it to help in the animation of the text, like if the terminal is trying to place characters in the right space in the right place. Animating the text was fairly easy, as I knew what I was going for, snappy movements and scales from far away to the center of the scene. Toggle hold keyframes are your best friends here, trust me. Just animate your position and scale text changes and convert all your keyframes to toggle hold mode and watch the magic work. Going to the next scene will be tricky if I'm not satisfied with how the animation looks like overall. And for that, I use the help of posterize time to help all animations look snappy by setting the value of half my composition. For example, 25 frames per second to 13 frames per second. I then use deep glow to bring out the best of my color values and made everything look more detailed by adding a simple sharpen effect in the adjustment layer. At this point, it was time to do the hardest task of all, animate every single kit past I placed in the scene. This is a very long but super simple task, so I won't bore you with it in this video, so you'll find a time lapse of the animation process in the description below the video. Let me know in the comment if you guys would be interested to see a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that instead. When I bought this substrate texture from Vectorcraft, I thought I will always just use it as a background texture, but oh boy I was very wrong. In the past two years I always found a crazy and creative way to use them at work. For example in this project at least I masked some part of the huge texture and chose to animate these very detailed pieces as if the terminal is looking for some files and if the terminal is transferring messages from one place to another. Then I colored them and placed them in the scene to do their job of scanning. Now, let's get back and make our first scene beautiful, shall we? We will use tint to color the entire comb to orange. Then, we will use Venetian blinds horizontally and vertically to cut the comb into small squares to make it look like we're looking at it through a digital screen. 
For scene 2 elements, I decided to color them to blue to make balance of color moving from one scene to another stand out more. Now that scene 1 and 2 are finished, let's take care of the final scene elements. We will start by animating every kit bash we animated in the scene, moving up. Up and down, left and right, like if they are being sorted by the computer while loading the main picture in the middle that we will add later on. Let's work on bringing the picture that the terminal needs to load. I will try to fix the colors of it by desaturating it using tint and turn down the highlights using curves. It just makes sense to load the picture slowly as all the kit patch is being animated, right? And for that, I'm using block load effect. To reveal the image in a glitchy way, I will use a glitch footage as a luma mat. I will make the loading look more techy and realistic by bringing in the specific animation I did while animating kit bashes. Then I'll change the color to blue using tint. Then put it on top of the image and duplicate it multiple times while lowering the opacity each time I duplicate it, to give it a sense of sophistication. So the more we duplicate it, the better. Let's animate this entire image com come from below and then slide it to the center of the scene using position. This is what we have for now. It looks amazing to be honest already, but we're here to take amazing to the next level. Let's add more depth to this glitch effect by duplicating the main image comp, putting it below the main comp and masking it out at the end. When you say awesome glitch, you say CC scale wipe to stretch the image. Then we add mosaic to make it look pixelated and blocky. Now let's add a tint to this comp. Blue would work to make it different from the main image. We're getting close to the end. We only have one comp to take care of and that's the additional images being loaded from the server. We will make a new composition and bring the main image animation with it. Then we will use tint to change its color to a different one, in our case orange. Then we will use a compound blur to distort it and stylized way. And finish this by pixelizing it even more by using CC block load. Now, just import the other images in and animate their position as well as some opacity or mask reveal. To make it more interesting, we will duplicate them a lot and offset them to give them this echo trail effect. Now, let's bring in this composition and let's put it below the main image comps and watch this amazing reveal. Now, this is the part where I show you some never seen before and overpowered nasty tricks. If you're happy with where you are now, well, congrats, you did it. But if you are as hungry as I am, this is where the real fun begins. <laughs> first thing first, the colors. The colors are not balanced and we have so much empty space in black. That's no good. Let's make a new adjustment layer and call it LUT. Then use the effect called Apply LUT. We will use the help of this LUT to get started. Then we will do the rest of the job using color balance by introducing the red shadow and the blue shadows even brighter. Now, let's make this digital look even stronger by using a deep glow. This will have the digital screen look even more realistic cause the colors are no longer perfect. Then, I brought over the same glitch footage I had used for the main image reveal and used a displacement map to make things glitch then duplicate it and revert the values to confuse this effect strength even more. Now let's add a quick chromatic aberration to help us focus in the center. And oh, since we're talking about focus, let's make a vignette, all right? So just make a solid, mask it, feather it, and dim it down. The animation is looking great, but it's still too clean. To fix this look, we will add a grain footage, or use noise effect if you don't have one. 
but I strongly advise you to instead get a grain footage, either free or purchase it, because that will save you tons of time in the render and preview. This is the part where it might get confusing, so let's focus up. We're gonna have to add a lot to scene one since it's what we need to grab the user's attention. And right now, it has so much empty space for something that is glitchy. Let's bring in that glitch footage we have been using and uh, do this nasty trick to make it unique and interestingly glitchy. We will use curves to make a unique separation of the green, blue, and red values, then expose this little fella. Now, let's use the Venetian blinds trick to make it digital. Now, the footage still looks fine to me. I don't like that. Let's make it lose its mind by introducing some LSD and shrooms. And for that, I'm gonna call our beloved Displacer Pro and push the X values to an insane amount. <laughs> then, I'm gonna add CC glass to make this footage cry and repent for its sins. Now, let's add a light leak from lens distortion and put it on top and sprinkle in some of those terminal kit batches around the scene. And this should bring us to this result. One little animation trick I cannot recommend enough is playing with your focus distance and aperture in your camera. And this will make your camera insane, since you're moving it through space and that's like real life. Now, at this point I went and rendered only scene 3 and brought it to the project. I used directional blur to create this digital glass reflection. The reflection is too perfect and clear, so let's use a slight blur. Then duplicate the layer to make this effect shine better. I went and rendered this entire project and brought it again and placed it under scene 3. First, I changed this position to make sure I get an accurate reflection position. Then use the level to bring out the highlights better and turn down its opacity to 5%. I used the curve to make it bluish and decrease just a bit of its exposure. I also use directional blur to get me this extended reflection effect and use the Venetian blinds combo again to make it look digital. Now, if we look at the beginning of the scene, you will see how important this trick is. But let's face it, we need better layering to bring out the perfect digital glitching. So, I rendered everything we have and brought it in. Put it under everything and use CC ball action. Decrease the ball size and make a very, very tiny grid spacing. And look at this now. If you are wondering how did we manage to get this positioning and offset, it's because this foot it's because this footage was rendered with time posterize, and now it is itself being posterized, so double posterization all the way. Now we're gonna reuse this footage and put it on top of CC ball background. Let's create a good fractal noise map for it. So for that, we're gonna make a solid and add fractal noise in it. Change the fractal type to dynamic and noise type to soft linear. And play with the contrast until you can see the difference between black and white. Then scale this little fella a little bit up. Then use the time expression in evolution to make it animate as long as we need. To finish things up, we will add a fast box blur to feather these edges right here of the noise. Getting back to our footage, we will use compound blur to make this footage look stylizedly foggy. <laughs> You're pretty much done. The last thing you have to do now is render only the terminal and background part of scene 3 and bring it in. 
put it on top of the scene 3 and use the directional blur and Venetian blight combo to make a very, very unique stylized digital reflection. And there you have it, a fully animated tactical terminal FUI that is unique. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. I'm very actually curious to which part you guys enjoyed the most in this tutorial. I do have a Patreon in case you guys want to support this channel and make sure you get exclusive behind the scenes and projects plus perks. My name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. I catch you guys on the next one.